Hello everybody and welcome to Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary Vay, Nur Chuck. And this, my friends, is the Thunder Show, AKA the Galaxy's most passionate wine program. And today we focus on supermarket wine. Wines that are exclusives or private labels for supermarkets around the country. Kroger's, Albertsons uh, are represented today. Three wines, all red, nine, 10, and 20 bones respectfully. And uh, I'm excited about trying these wines. I think a lot of times you get great buyers in these big chain supermarkets. A lot of times you think of private labels as but I know that a lot of times they could be huh, mainly because there's a lot of wine out there and you can buy bulk juice that's high quality often at very good prices. So I'm very excited about trying these three wines. We've had enormous success in the past with Costco and Trader Joe's showing very well and I hope these places continue that trend. Um, I know a lot of people uh, across the country have these um, supermarkets buy them and uh, I'm excited to try them. So let's get right into it. There's no reason to wait. The Espuela del Gacho, uh, 2007 Malbec uh, from Argentina, nine bucks uh, and is a exclusive of Kroger's and, and I'm excited about this. Let's see what happens here. Am I ever shopping at Kroger's? No. Okay, nor have I. But that's where East Coast boys. Yeah. Right. They don't, we don't have them. No. no. Uh, snippy snip. So this is from Mendoza, Malbec. Malbec's as hot as anything. I mean, it's like Megan Fox hot right now. People wanna drink it, they wanna own it. Um, the price points are really good. And uh, Mendoza is a place that really pumps out quality wine even at low price points. Uh, again, Nine Bones, which is extremely attractive. Not much coming through in the nose. It's a little aromatically challenged, so that concerns me a hair. There's a little bit of like a peppermint cherry kind of thing going on, but nothing too exciting on the nose. So definitely not a good start for the uh, gacho. Let's give it a whirl. Some really obvious plum flavors right off the bat. So you get a really nice plum component on the initial attack. I also get almost like a white pepper curry mix um, in the mid palate. So it does show a little bit of an interesting characteristic. A little melted down red Twizzlers on the back end as well. So a little candy action, a little too fakey sugar candy for my palate. Um, um, but clearly some flavors, definitely not a stale wine and definitely reminds me of like that perfect pizza wine. I'm gonna score this wine 85 points. You know, run of the, oh, it's been a while. You were there, Mott, you were there. Uh, 85 points on this sucker. Um, good little solid wine. Nine bones, I'm not embarrassed. Malbec, good price point. Malbecs have crept up. Um, great package, by the way. Good job on the marketing side from Kroger's. Yeah, let's go 85 points. Good plums, good, uh, adequate, um, adequate, nuances uh, on, the, on the pepper and that curriness, uh, which I like a little bit. And on the back end, a, a solid finish. Definitely Wednesday night Pizza Hut wine. You know, just like casual, 85 points, solid, not bad at all. Fairly good start. Can't be uh, disappointed with that. You just can't. The French House, 2007 Syrah from the south of France from the Vin de Pays classification. 87 points wine spectator. So a spectator score for an exclusive label. 10 bones, um, and this comes from Albertsons. Um, and so let's see what's going on here. Let's give a little bit of rinse. Hope you guys are all doing well. Tasting along, tasting some vino with me, and I appreciate that. Sniffy Sniff McGee. I like this, you, you like that Sniffy Sniff McGee, huh, Ma? I might just move, you know what? Should we just move it to Sniffy Sniff McGee? <laughs> you like it. It caught you. It will, but it caught you. It'll be good for 14 episodes. All right. Um, so what I like about this right off the bat is it's got a very interesting gaminess. Uh, it has almost like Pinotage kind of nose. Uh, um, yeah, very very rubber, uh, earth kind of tones. Um, kind of like, what's the best? Maybe take a pink, rat, pink Super Bowl, cut it in half, and then smear it in a lot of like dirt, you know, on the side of the road kind of thing. Get that. Oh, I'm about to sneeze. You know, I don't sneeze. That was the first, I think. Ever? On the show. 
I think I sneezed one other time. It's crazy, I never sneeze. Wild. Um, I should have just let it go. It just got real disgusting on the maniacs. Um, yeah, just a leather kind of gaminess coming through on this wine. Uh, I like the dark uh, fruit, uh, which reminds me a little bit more of pomegranate. This is a very, very intriguing nose. Let's give it a whirl. Holy bell pepper. Wow. Some great green bell pepper flavors. Even a spiciness, a little jalapeno up in my grill. Um, this wine's exciting me. As you can see, the level of energy is spiking because this is the kind of wine that my palate really enjoys. Really interesting nuances. Um, I, I like this leather meats kind of like squirrel meat flavor, so it's kind of gamey. Um, and very green. This is gonna not appeal to a lot of palates, but for me, um, I like the celery uh, kind of turn up, kind of bell pepper. Uh, this is green, uh, kind of like a Bloody Mary, you know, kind of, I feel like it's the celery, I'm biting celery, but there's that, you know, pepper and Worcestershire sauce and tomato juice, it's, it's very vegetal, um, herbaceous. I like it. I'm gonna score this wine 89 plus points. I'm very, very into this wine. It's not thin like a lot of wines from, I mean, you could tell this is not high quality grape, but it's high quality enjoyment. At the end of the day, that's the game. 89 points, 89, I'm gonna go 89 points. I got a little excited. 89 points, lower the plus off, sorry SS. Uh, the French house, Vin de Pais, Syrah, 07, bring in thunder. Good for Albertsons and Shaw's Osco is also, I don't know if it's, that's one family of supermarkets, 10 bones. Good wine. Wow. Again, 94% of you would hate this wine. It's just too green. So buyer beware. And finally, the $20 wine from Q. The Q Collection, Howell Mountain Zinfandel, lot number 12, only 595 cases made. 2007 vintage, 20 bones, super value. Uh, let's see what this Discover Q, Howl Mountain, highest quality, blah, 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 blah. Let's see what's going on here. I like this pace of the show. Come on. Um, sniffy sniff. Very fruity on the nose, uh, undeniable kind of raspberry juice. Just like good old fashioned raspberry juice coming through on the nose. Very candy-like, but there's also a little, wow, that's kind of neat. What? It smells like fresh catcher's mitt, like a, in a baseball glove. And like, like, like if you put a little like Tin Man, like the Tin Man, like the, he squirted that oil on him. There's something, something interesting here. Something I haven't smelled in a lot of wines and I can't really put my finger on it. I'm searching here. Matt, smell this. Maybe you can help me out. There's something there. It kind of feels like an artificial product. Like, I don't think it's raid insects. I, there's a lot of things running through my mind, but I can't pinpoint it. Do you smell it? Like a little chemically? It is chemically, right? It smells like the inside of like a tire or like some sort of over-the-counter product that I've smelled before and I can't put my finger on it. It does smell like insect, insect repeller, yeah, right? It, that's an analogy, a good analogy. Right? So there's like a little insect repellent kind of cherry thing going on here. Let's give it a whirl. Good tannins, good fruit. Nice quality fruit, actually. Too oaky for me. Not uh, but uh, you know, just like definitely oak. You know, a half a splinter in my mouth right now, which bothers me a little bit. Um, covers a little bit of the flavor, especially on the finish. I get this cookie, kind of oaky, you know, I really didn't want to bite this stick kind of thing going on. Not bad, uh, doesn't detract from it. Um, ironically, I think these are much better values um, for my palate. I mean, it's definitely fuller and meaner than the last two wines, but for my palate, I'm gonna score this wine an 85. I'm gonna score it an 85. 
You were thinking so... about something else. What were you thinking about, Mott? Share with the Vayner Nation. Get today's show up. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> That's a good thing to think about. 85 points, kind of interesting, 20 bones. I, I, the little French house, again, many of your palates would score this wine in the 70s because it's so green, so please be aware of that. The Q's not bad, not worth the price. These two are very much worth their time to at least be sought out and, and, and see what you guys think. The Mendoza Shiraz, uh, Melbac, I might have been a little nice to in hindsight, just so thin. Maybe I'm gonna go 84 on it. Um, so uh, there's that, so erase that whole thing. Uh, question of the day. If you had your way, what would that say? You, with a little bit of me, oh crap, day, way, say. I was. We're changing the wine world.